Thanks for joining us for the First Faith Horizons podcast. My name is Nathan Sack, and with me is Chris Gall. Welcome, Chris Gall. Hi, Nathan. Thank you. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Nathan, tell me about your passion for doing this podcast. Well, thanks, Chris. I was praying with the Lord, and and God gave me a, a vision for Faith Horizons, and and the vision is, you know, to restore hope and prosperity to Kansas City. Our first approach to that is I'm starting a podcast, a podcast that will focus on a business's approach to create solutions to achieve that goal. And in specific, we're focusing on a business's impact on their people, their customers and their neighborhoods, their people being you know, their employees, their teammates, how can, and then for, as far as like customers are concerned, how can a, how can a user experience from a business uh, positively impact a customer to, you know, achieve a certain outcome? What, what kind of outcome do we, do we want from our, from our interactions with our, our customers uh, apart from, you know, <laughs> them coming back, then neighborhoods, uh, businesses just by being there and bringing their culture in, you know, their employees drive into that neighborhood or their employees are from that neighborhood. Often, sometimes these, these businesses will hire from the people that, that are close by. And so they, they bring an economy into a, a financial, a, a new thing, you know, financially to an area. And so really Faith Horizons podcast is, it's about finding the solutions that are impacting, that are positively impacting the people, the customers, and the neighborhoods of the businesses in Kansas City, and and I'm, when I say Kansas City, I'm I'm thinking of like the Kansas City area, the Kansas City Metro, in general. So not just just not just the Kansas City proper, but but just in the surrounding area and in and also in Kansas City. How can we increase the businesses' impact to their people, their customers, and their neighborhoods? I'm really confident that businesses have incredible potential if not the greatest potential to positively influence their cities and neighborhoods so we're really betting on businesses and and also businesses business owners in general are their problem solvers their solution creators their their ingenuity creates solutions yeah that's great that's exciting you've had your your vision and your passion for helping the communities and, and helping small businesses and so you have a little bit of experience in that, I think, don't you, in your past? Yeah, through a couple different things that came together, I was able to uh, help at least one organization. We were able to restructure their websites. They had two websites, restructure their websites and rebrand them. We provided direction to create another product line to communicate what they were doing more effectively to their client, their client list. I guess it's a ministry, so they're not technically clients, but they are. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, they're your your customers, your the the people you service, or people you you work with. Sure. But I thought you also had some experience in small business. You work for a small business owner currently, and prior to that, though, I think you've had some small business experience. You know, this is not your your first time starting a business, right? Yeah. Um, currently I have worked with a small business for the last 12 years. I've had the opportunity of working for a, a great cleaning company in Kansas city. And, uh, I've actually started my own cleaning company it lasted for one of them lasted for a year. And then another one lasted for a short time. We were cleaning apartments and, and it, it worked out, but then, we decided to close the doors of the organization. A few things fell through. It didn't work out. Um, that didn't work out well as we had thought. We actually, we hadn't done a correct client analysis and I didn't understand what it took to, to do that. But, but we learned, but it was an incredible learning experience. And, and sometimes you got to learn through the, <laughs> through failures. Also, on the side right now, I, I love helping uh, small businesses put together uh, websites and work on their branding. And, and really, that's truly a passion of mine because there's so many 
businesses that they're, they're in the weeds of what they do. And they might be mowing yards or, or pouring cement and they don't know how to put together a website. They don't know how to, to brand themselves so that they can generate more clients or, or how to create a structure so that they can grow their businesses. And so I like to help provide tips and advice on how to do that with small businesses. Yeah, that's great. I mean, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have had my great website. I mean, that you were a tremendous help. The work you did for me when I started out about a year and a half ago already, that was incredible work that you did. I had no clue, you know, what do I need? And you're like, well, this is what we can do. And you just were amazing because you knew what, obviously how to do it, how to design it and and get it up and running and get things better because it it just wasn't, wasn't my cup of tea. Obviously it's not my expertise. I had no clue. (laughs) Yeah. I, I think right now too, is some of the businesses, what you just mentioned is really, really important. I, I, I totally agree. I think what's going on is they're trying to keep their businesses running, whatever it is. And they're, they're not having a chance to take a, take a breath and adjust because there's so many challenges. And, and I think this is a good time, though, for some of them, if they think this way, that because these are challenging times, is a moment for them to, to do things differently, to, to uh, do things a different way. And to see how things can be, these challenges can be opportunities to start afresh. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. I was actually over in Westport. No, not Westport, Weston. I I said that wrong, Weston. I was in Weston the other day and there was uh, two business leaders I spoke to and they said that they had started using more of an online market to market their materials and now that COVID, the, the more intense part of it is coming to an end, they now have a, both a, a physical location and an online store. So they have two separate streams of income. And so it's actually been, in, in a roundabout way, beneficial to their growth as a business. Uh, it, it forced them to, to think outside the box, which is always helpful for any organization. I was actually able to work with you on your website and a lot of it was the branding and just kind of getting the messaging correct. So you started a, a leadership coaching business and it's called a sweet generous leadership. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Definitely. Thank you. Um, sui generis is a Latin word that means unique or one of a kind. And I have adopted that term from the leader, the unique leadership that I see in every leader. So about 30 some years ago, when I served in a unit in the Marine Corps, that was one of the mottos of the unit, sui generis. And at the time, some of those leaders that I had a chance to serve with made quite an impression on me as a, uh, I would say, up and coming and developing leader. And one of the stories that I can remember as far as being a leader in leadership and coaching was a young lieutenant just joined our unit and he was still what we call like wet behind the ears because he was he was young, just a young lieutenant. He was still an officer though in the Marines and well trained. And I was maybe ten years in the Marine Corps. So I'm thinking, hey, I got this, you know, so we're talking about you know, I have my experience, but I also had a bit of an ego back then too, just a little bit. Yeah, sure. But seriously though, you know, him and I were so, I would say similar and he was actually, you know, my supervisor. There were times there where we just, we did not get along. We just butted heads. However, we still got the work done. We still got things going in the three or four Marines that we worked with you know, would see that. And him and I had a talk and we said, Hey, look, yeah, we, we need to work this out. You know, both of us recognized work, the friction between us is causing an unhealthy working environment with our 
young group of Marines that needed to get the, the mission done. And it was better that we recognize that than our senior leadership over us, because then they would have to step in, which ha- has happened, which that's the way it goes sometimes. However, after we had that talk, everything wasn't real rosy. However, we had quite an understanding that, that we didn't before. And so we kind of gave each other uh, some room and, if you will, and respect, especially, you know, I, I was supposed to anyway, because of his seniority as my, as my superiors, you know, as my supervisor. However, he, he also gave the same respect back. And what I'm getting at is that it was, it was learned. It was earned. It was learned and it was earned. And I had to kind of readjust because I thought I sort of like, I kind of arrived. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. Because I met him because he was willing to push back. And because of the strength of his leadership. And then so fast forward, that was back 30 years ago, say, mid 80s. Fast forward about 2015, him and I connect. Him and I connect and he's uh, in Oklahoma. We reconnected. He got out as a major. I retired as a master sergeant. And we're talking about old stories and, and, and a similar story close to what I just mentioned about him and I. That, that was incredible. Um, so it was something like that just has really stayed with me on the sui generis. There's, there's a sui generis, unique leadership in every leader. And whatever that is, they're going to do it, you know, to the best because that's what's in them. And so my, my passion is, in my vision and my passion is to help other leaders draw that out of them. Whatever that unique leadership is, that unique purpose they have, so they can accomplish it for greater impact, not only in themselves, but in others in business and life. Yeah, they certainly would have an incredible impact on the people they lead and the organizations they lead and the customers that from the organization that they lead. A, leadership, a leader's impact is it's like, it's like, what do you do when you drop a, a, a rock in the water? It just you know, ripples out. It's like a ripple effect. It's a leader's ripple effect. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yep. A domino effect, a ripple effect. And what we want is positive impact. We want to make that clear. Fortunately, there can be some negative impact of a, of a leader. And then sometimes that could be turned around for good too. So yeah, thanks for letting me share that. That's great. Yeah. And thank you so much for letting me assist you in, in, in creating an, a website that helps frame what you do best. It's been really a, a blessing. And, and, and as you speaking on, you know, the, the goal of Faith Horizons is to help impact the people, the customers and the neighborhoods helping businesses impact the people or businesses or organizations impact the people, the customers and the neighborhoods that they're working in or working with. Really what Sweet Generous is all about is, is impacting the people, which really impacts everything because it's all about the people. It, you can't have people without the customers. You can't have the customers without the people because that's, that has a lot to do with the, a culture that you create. You know, what type of culture do you want to have in the organization that you're running so that you can attract the correct employees and also attract the, the, attract the, the customers and then assist them and, and help make their lives better. So really the client or the person who uh, Faith Horizons is targeting are the people who have experience in, in different neighborhoods around Kansas City and who have a wide variety of experience of, of working with, with their people, the teammates that they have, um, helping them get benefits, helping them develop in leadership, helping them serve the customers better, and then also working with individuals that we want to work with individuals that have or give them a microphone, the people that have experience in, in unique ways to serve customers, to kind of highlight some of their user experience so that other organizations can say, hey, you know, that's a good idea. Let's, let's do that. 
or um, let's try that. And then what ways have been, you know, what have these people who have experience that have been there, been there for a long time, what experience do they have with the neighborhoods? Like what have they seen change in the neighborhoods? What would they like to see change in the neighborhoods? I want to ask the person who's been in a neighborhood for 40 years that served on a lot of different community boards and organizations, you know, what, what have you liked about your, your neighborhood? And then what, what are some things that you'd like to see changed and, and, and then how can businesses or organizations that were, that are within your neighborhoods help that change? When you were speaking on that, that's so good. There's so many coffee shops around here. And there's also a few roasteries. There's a few uh, roasteries without naming them. And then what is their impact, you know, to the environment or the community, the neighborhood? How are they influencing that section of where their business is? Or it may not. It may be like some of the coffee shops or roasteries are doing is where the coffee actually comes from. The ground that is being grown in, the country that it comes from, they're impacting those people that are out there picking all those beans. They're helping them. They're helping them in some way. You know, there's a lot of missionary organizations that actually go and they actually start businesses. It's actually one of the most effective ways to do ministry in other countries right now is they start businesses which will create economies in those impoverished nations. And then through that economy, they'll, they'll do ministry, but yeah, coffee is one of those coffee beans is one of those. And, and I actually recently spoke with a, with a pastor and a ministry organization in town. And he actually, they're thinking about doing that with uh, one of their, they have a, a person who lives in Uganda that has coffee and they're thinking about starting a coffee roastery business or a, and, and then that would, that would provide an economy to Uganda. And, and then they would a, be able to grow an organization in Uganda in Africa, which is incredible. And, you know, at the same time, if they start a coffee shop, they'll be serving a community in Kansas city and we'll be experiencing Ugandan coffee. Well, my mind's racing right now because I'm thinking of my wife from Guatemala. The pastor friend I had, bless his heart, who passed away about four years ago, when I would pick him up at the airport from his trips from Guatemala, he would give me a bag of some coffee from Guatemala. And it was like, oh, it was so good. It was like gold. And it was, I think, the gold something label or whatever they called it. But anyway, in the in that in that uh, the colorful bag with a string around it. Anyway, yeah, I and I happened to had I had a chance, an opportunity to be in an area where they grew the coffee. When I served in Guatemala, the, the group of Marines went with some people on a uh, white water, kind of like a a low risk white water rafting excursion because yeah, because they wanted us you know to be safe but have fun because we still needed to protect the embassy, right? Come back safely, right? <laughs> uh, seriously, though, and it was a lot of fun. And that's what it was. We were in this beautiful area where they grew coffee, and it was the ground. I could just see it. The, the, the grass was lush. There were coffee bean, beans grown. And, and all of a sudden, it was, when was it, like in the morning? It was like 8 o'clock in the morning, or seven o'clock in the morning, whenever the time the sun just come up and it was, it was almost 75, 80 degrees already. And all of a sudden it just started to rain like, like a mist, like somebody sprayed you with a hose for like just a few minutes. And then it was done. Any, anyhow, it was in that beautiful area where some of the best coffee was grown. And I'm just thinking now, wow, it just gave me a, a it was a good memory. And do I, am I going to start a coffee shop? I don't know. Probably not. My wife still has family there. Wow. Yeah, that's incredible. I think that's so fun. My my wife is from, uh, her her dad is from Colombia. So we usually drink Colombian coffee, even though it's not as fresh. Store-bought Colombian coffee. Well, thanks, Chris, for joining me today for the First Faith Horizons podcast. It, it's been a great time just getting to know you more and the business that you've started, Sweet Generous Leadership 
Thank you. Oh, thank you as well, Nathan. It's been a pleasure. This has been exciting to be all a part of this. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. So how, how would uh, people go to find you if they wanted to find your website online? Oh, yeah, thanks. Definitely. Uh, just just has it spelled sui generis, S-U-I, G-E-N-E-R-I-S, leadership.com, sui generis, leadership.com. My website's there, my information and my contact, get in contact with me. Chris is a great person. He's an incredible listener. And having worked with him myself, it, it, it was a, a very encouraging experience. Chris is very lighthearted and brings a lot of very unique resources to the experience that, that you will have with, with Chris. Oh, thank you, Nathan. And I, I really enjoyed it, my time with you. And I grew and I learned and I was encouraged as well. Thank you so much for joining us for the first Faith Horizons podcast. We look forward to sharing insight on how to run businesses where people want to work, that customers love, and neighborhoods are blessed to have. The Faith Horizons website is just as it sounds, www.faithhorizons.com. I will include this and Chris Gall's website, Sweet Generous Leadership, in the show notes so that you can find us online. You can also follow Faith Horizons on Instagram at Faith Horizons. If you'd like to partner with the Faith Horizons mission, our Patreon link is www.patreon.com slash Faith Horizons. Thank you so much for joining us.